All right. Here's the one that will trigger you guys. Uh, by the way, big story uh, about this in the Washington Post today, if you want to find it, I, I, you probably need a subscription to the Post, but under innovations, they've got a big story about this, uh, this test. As I said, I've already used it, and, I, I'm, and, I, and luckily I came out completely negative, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. All right. So uh, this is from The Economist today. I think it's today. Yep, it's, uh, it's in The Economist today. Yesterday, sorry, economist yesterday, and and this is uh, this is the uh, this is the headline, and I know this is particularly going to surprise some of you young people. It says Gen Z, Gen Z, uh, between right now I think between 15 and 24, 15 and 24, so young 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 adults and late teens, right? Gen Z is unprecedentedly rich. Pretty much every, pretty much every other cohort, baby boomers, Gen Xs, and millennials, were not as wealthy as Gen Z is at this age, adjusted for inflation, of course. And uh, the numbers are quite startling because they're completely unexpected. And, uh, and, of course, nobody, uh, nobody, uh, nobody thinks this is true. All I hear from Gen Zs and millennials, and we'll get to millennials in a minute, all we hear from Gen Zs and millennials is how they're screwed, how they're worse off, how they're going to be worse off than everybody else, how uh, Gen Xs are so much better off, how the baby boomers are so much better off. It turns out, based on now a number of studies looking at this, uh, that it's just not true. It's just not true. Um, uh, this is the generation that, of course, they, uh, you know, uh, Jonathan Haidt is labeled the anxious generation. Uh, this is a generation that is less likely to form relationships than uh, younger generations. They're less likely to have sex than, uh, sorry, other generations. Then they're less likely uh, to uh, drink than other generations, and much more likely to be depressed, much more likely to be depressed than other generations. So a lot of bad stuff going on here. Gen Xs, and yet, and yet, in terms of wealth and income, wealth and income, it's richer than any other generation in American history. That is, at this age, they're doing better than everybody else. And this is taking into account the cost of housing, which is ridiculous for Gen Zs. And it's taking into account student debt. In other words, it's taking into account the balance sheet, not just the asset, but also the liabilities that Gen Z has. Um, so, uh, you know, Gen Zs are, uh, you know, working at this point in their life, at uh, higher rates than, um, uh, than other generations uh, in terms of just the, 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 the unemployment among them or, or the labor participation rate is actually higher than it was at this rate for others. They have benefited from the very tight labor market, so wages among this group has gone up significantly. And this is true not just in the United States. This is true in the US, in Europe, in the UK. Um, uh, so uh, hourly rates uh, are, are up, uh, you know, significantly, 13% year over year, uh, compared to 6% for workers 25 and 54. So 16 to 24-year-olds seeing their wages rise at a much faster rate than 25 to 54-year-olds. Um, last year, people 18 to 21, so average hourly pay in Britain, this is in Britain, rising by 15% which outstripped pay raises for, of any other age group. This is true, for example, in New Zealand even, where 20 to 24s increased by 10% compared to an average of six for all other age groups. So there's strong wage growth uh, boosted by, uh, you know, which has boosted uh, this generation's uh, income. Uh, 
you know, they, they, uh, they've, got, they've got money. They've got wealth. They, uh, they have uh, high incomes. Uh, and they're doing much, much, much better than others. Now, it's true, again, they don't drink. They don't have sex. They don't engage in social activities. They don't, and, and they're probably going to marry even later than millenniums, right? Um, and they, it turns out, produce fewer innovations. So uh, they're less likely to file a patent than they were in the recent past. So that's worrisome, very worrisome. Uh, and they, and they, um, uh, you know, they're less likely to uh, to be at some of the top of their fields, right? I mean, for example, uh, music, popular music, is usually a young person's field. Gen Zs are not doing very well in that. They're being outpaced by millennials, for example, in that. So not all good news, but from an economic perspective, taking everything into account, including housing and everything else, at this age, nobody's ever done better than Gen Zs have done. Uh, and, and this, again, is both true of income and, uh, and wealth. Um, you know, there's a... The, the, the strongest aspect of this, probably the thing driving this more than anything else right now, is the fact that unemployment is so low. That is, that they have, uh, they are driving wages up by the very fact that there's a shortage of employees. There's just a shortage in America and in Europe, even in spite of all the immigration, there's just a shortage of employees right now, particularly given uh, baby boomers retiring, uh, baby boomers uh, leaving their jobs, go semi-retiring, whatever it happens to be, uh, there's just not enough young people filling up all those jobs. This does not have anything to do with minimum wage. Uh, minimum wage would not affect wealth in any kind of significant way. All right, uh, on top of that, that, I was expecting just to talk about that, but then, uh, just a few minutes before the show started, so I haven't read this in full detail, uh, Scott Linsicum put out a piece today uh, called Cheer Up Millennials, all you millennials out there, uh, about how millennials are doing, you know, fantastically well. Then in spite of all the economic problems, millennials are doing dramatically better than Gen X's and dramatically better in terms of wealth and income and in terms of net wealth, taking into account liabilities than uh, Gen X's or baby boomers. Now, uh, first, the bad news. The bad news is housing is very expensive. So uh, uh, it's, very, uh, it's very difficult for, uh, for millennials to own their own home. Home ownership is down by age. But part of that is also the fact that uh, people, are, people are forming families, forming families, creating families bunching up as families. Anyway, they're having babies a lot later, which uh, makes them eager to buy homes later. So the, the fact that home ownership is not as high for millennials as it is for other groups, it has to do more with the fact that they form households later and therefore the urgency of buying a home becomes later and they likely buy a home. Uh, so we're likely to see this change over the next 10 years as millennials start getting married, having kids, and buying homes. Uh, so, uh, it, it, but it is true that home prices have increased dramatically, and this is a double-edged sword. A sword. On the one hand, it, uh, if you already own a home, the fact that uh, home prices have gone up has increased your wealth significantly. If you don't own a home yet, it's a negative. So it was a positive there. It's a negative in the sense that it's very hard to afford a home given how high uh, home prices are. So no question that uh, millennials are challenged by, uh, by, the, um, uh, by uh, home ownership. It is true that millennials have rapidly accelerated home buying in recent years. Uh, and uh, from, particularly from uh, 2016 to 2021, you've seen a significant increase in uh, home buying by millennials, again, as they start forming households, as they start getting married and having kids and everything else. So, uh, um, but when it comes to wealth, millennials own stock, stock market has done very well for them. The, those who own homes, homes have done very well for them. Incomes for millennium in, in real terms 
have gone up significantly uh, for millennials. So the, the bottom line is that, and, and again, multiple studies, not one study, not biased, academic, from think tanks, a bunch of different things. And um, the reality is that uh, millennials' uh, wealth has increased, particularly in the last few years. And uh, they, uh, at the age of 29 or so forth, if you're a millennial at 29, you're significantly richer than Gen X was at 29, and that baby boomers were at 29. So uh, this idea that kids have a higher whatever than, than every, every generation seems to be continuing in America, part of that American, uh, American dream. Both median and average net worth of Americans aged 35 to 44, mostly this is mostly older millennials, um, uh, is the highest it has ever been. Again, adjusted for inflation, adjusted for everything. This is true of income as well, uh, income and wealth. So overall, the news is good. If you want to delve into the numbers and the graphs and everything else, um, then uh, feel free to check out uh, Scott Lincecum's uh, paper. It's up on the dispatch. Uh, it arrived in my email earlier today. It's excellent. Scott Lincecum is one of the best um, policy economists uh, in, the, in my view, in the world today, he, he does some of the best, most uh, valuable work on these kind of, uh, on these kind of things, uh, whether it has to do with income and wealth or whether it has to do with tariffs and trade policy or whether it has to do with industrial policy. Uh, really, you should all be following Scott Lissicum. I really do think if you value economic liberty, he's the guy at the front lines actually fighting for this. Um, in, a, in a significant way. You can get all the data. I mean, I've just given you highlights, uh, but it's all the data and um, the details and uh, the graphs and all the cool stuff on Scott's, uh, in Scott's uh, blog.